Hey guys, it's General Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, we are going to be doing another comparison video. Uh, but, of course, it's going to be another AI comparison this time, not a weapon comparison. Because uh, this was a very popular quest for a while, actually, and a lot of people have been wanting to see uh, which Halo game has the strongest version of the Hunters out of the entire series. So, that is what we'll be comparing today. And this will be a pretty big comparison this time, because we're going to be doing all the Halo games, except for Halo 5, um, but all the Halo games that do have Hunters, which does include ODST this time as well. But of course, we still can't compare uh, Halo 5 for the same reason as all the other uh, comparisons, in that we don't have any mod tools available to us that can get the uh, stats for Hunters. I know there are some mod tools out there for Halo 5, but not ones that can get stats for Hunters that we can use to make an objective comparison in this case. So unfortunately, we do have to leave by Halo 5, but we are going to cover all the other Halo games. So, let's get right into the comparison. So, starting with Halo 1. The Hunters, well, uh, when I first played Halo 1, when I was very little, I used to think they were like mini boss fights. Um, because like, you know, that's how I saw Hunters back then, but, you know, obviously Halo 1 first introduced the Hunters, and they've changed quite a lot throughout the Halo games. But looking at the base stats for Hunters, the fleshy part of them, not the armor, they have 200 points of health, and when a hunter melees you, that does 45 points of damage to you. So, you know, not bad for a baseline, I guess. Uh, but, of course, their melee is not their main attack. They have a fuel rod cannon <laughs> attached to them. The fuel rods, individually, they have pretty much infinite range, but like our previous fuel rod gun comparison, they are affected by gravity and a gravity scale of 1, which, um, you know, we'll compare to later fuel rod cannons and future hunters. Uh, but anyways, the fuel rods they have a velocity of 14 at the beginning, which gradually slows down to 5 over time, and it does 75 points of damage. So, not bad, right? Hunter's pretty tough in Halo 1, and you know, a lot of people think that Halo 1 sandbox is like pretty overpowered for weapons and AIs, but there's a lot of issues with the Hunter in Halo 1. Yeah, it has a lot of health, but it dies to one shot from a magnum in the back for some reason, and a slight tap from a vehicle will instantly kill it as well. So, eh, the health doesn't really matter in Halo 1 in this case. Because moving on to Halo 2, the Hunters have quite a few changes. Uh, one, <laughs> you can't really splatter them that well anymore. It, it would take a lot, like, you know, just ran them with a the ghost here and didn't really do much to them. Whereas in Halo 1, that would have sent the Hunter flying in, like, instant death. But, of course, another big change is also that the Hunters now, instead of a fuel rod cannon, they have a beam cannon which uh, we will be taking a look at in just a moment. But let's start with the uh, health first. <clears throat> so Halo 2's Hunters uh, have half the health of Halo 1's Hunters, only 100 compared to 200, but the melee damage has been significantly increased from 45 up to 100. And for some reason in the stats, it says that the Hunters actually have like an energy shield on them, which uh, has 20 points of shield health and a very long recharge time, but I I don't know, I don't, I don't think that's used in the game, that might be like cut from the game or something, just unused, but still there in the stats. So, I'm just throwing it out there for a fun fact, but, you know, disregard it for this comparison. <laughs> but as for the beam cannon, uh, it's technically like a rapid fire beam cannon, it fires like many projectiles, 30 in fact, uh, when it fires it, and each beam projectile, it, it looks like one straight beam, but it's actually like multiple, uh, bolts actually but each one has a range of 40 world units um, starts with velocity of 3 and accelerates to 14 world units a second and it does 12 points of damage for each bolt and because it fires 30 uh, per burst it does a total of 360 points of damage assuming all of them hit you uh, and you're on the right difficulty of course so that's pretty powerful actually um, very effective weapon but uh, the next Halo game to introduce the hunters is Halo 3 now, you probably noticed a trend by now, and I mentioned it many times. Halo 3's hunters, actually Halo 3's sandbox in general, a lot of weapons, a lot of AIs, they're pretty much like Halo 2's, just you know, visually upgraded, uh, and many of the stats will be the same as well. And that is still true of Halo 3. Hunters have the same health, same melee damage, both 100. Uh, their beam cannon, it's the same. Uh, max range of 40, velocity of 3 at the beginning, and then accelerating to 14, 12 points of damage, and of course each burst is 30 rounds, or 30, 30 bolts I guess, so assuming all the beams hit, 
it would do 360 points of damage. So it's exactly the same as Halo 2's Hunters, except for one difference, one big difference. As you, uh, you can kind of see through the text here, but um, the the back of the Hunters, they can be broken off. Some of the armor can be knocked off on Hunters in Halo 3, which is new to Halo 3. In Halo 2, you couldn't knock their armor off. So knocking the back of the Hunter off, the back plating, uh, it makes them a lot more vulnerable. Much bigger area you can shoot them with to uh, kill them. So that's a vulnerability in Halo 3 that doesn't exi exist in Halo 2. Now, ODST, usually ODST is like almost identical to Halo 3 in many ways. So we rarely compare ODST uh, weapons or AIs because a lot of times they're you know just they're 100% identical to Halo 3, and that is still the case with the regular Blue Hunter to the left, the one that shoots the beams out. So we won't be comparing that hunter, because that's completely identical to Halo 3's uh, regular hunter. But ODST introduces a new hunter, the Gold Hunter, which once again shoots the uh, Fear Rod Cannon again. So let's, take, let's see how that compares to the other hunters. So mixing it up a little bit. So its health and melee damage are both still the same as the regular hunter, not surprising. Uh, but its Fear Rod Gun... It has a max range of 80, so it's not infinite like Halo 1's Fear Rod Gun. However, it it can fire in much more straight line and much greater distance uh, than Halo 1's because it's less affected by gravity. Uh, it had a gravity scale of 1 in Halo 1's Fear Rod Gun, but this one has been reduced by pretty much um, 75%, so it could fly a lot farther um, without arcing as much. Uh, as for its velocity, it starts at 15 meters a second, and it slows down over time to 6.5. Uh, but the damage is pretty high compared to uh, the other, uh, compared to Halo 1's. It does a damage of 120 on, uh, on explosion, so it's pretty powerful. Now, after ODST comes Halo Reach. These hunters are now pretty much uh, going back to Halo 1's hunters. They, uh, they're the regular blue color hunters, but they now fire the fuel rods, which makes sense uh, as far as canon goes, because Halo Reach does take place before Halo 1. So I, I guess, you know, I'm not a lore expert, but I can only assume that the beam cannons for the hunters are like a new addition, new upgrade to them after Halo 1. So going back to Halo Reach, they won't have it anymore. As for their stats, Halo Reach's hunters have a huge amount of health. 250 compared to the 100 from previous Halo games and the 200 from Halo 1, making them the toughest hunters so far. Uh, their melee damage remains the same though, 100, like all the previous games except for Halo 1. As for their Fear Rod Cannon, the range is still the same as ODST's, same with the gravity scale as well, so they will fire at the exact same range and distance and drop at the same rate as Halo 3 ODST's. Fear Rod Hunters, but the velocity, starting velocity is the same, however it does not slow down as much, it slows down to 12 meters per second over time, whereas um, ODST's drops down to 6.5, uh, but the damage is reduced though, instead of 120 in ODST, it is now 100 in Halo Reach, so it's a little weaker, but it will go a little faster. So the last game we can compare now is Halo 4. Halo 4's hunters are more or less, like, you, you probably know the trend as well, like, much like how Halo 3 is very similar to Halo 2, Halo 4 tends to be very similar to Halo Reach. Sometimes there are big differences here and there, but a lot of times they are quite similar, if not the same, aside from appearances, and there are many changes in appearances to Halo 4's hunters, but we'll get to that later. So, Halo 4's hunters, they have the same health and same melee damage as Halo Reach, uh, as for the Fear Rod Cannon, for some reason they abandoned the Beam Cannon, even though it's newer than uh, Halo Reach, much newer. It's newer than Halo 3, but they abandoned it for some reason, and they stuck with the Fear Rod Cannon. But the max range is still the same, same with the gravity scale, so that'd be the exact same as Halo Reach and ODST. However, the velocity, uh, it starts at the same initial velocity of 15 meters per second, but it actually is more like ODST's Fear Rod Cannon, that it drops down to 6.5 meters per second over time, whereas Halo Reach only dropped down to 12. So it's a little bit of a slight downgrade to the fuel rods of the Hunters in Halo 4. Uh, but the damage is still the same, 100, so it did not bump it back up to ODST's damage, so it's a little less still. <clears throat> but 
yeah, so that is Halo 4's Hunter. It's pretty much the same as Halo Reach, but just slightly slower fuel rod uh, bolts over time. So, which Halo game has the strongest Hunter? This was a tough one, actually, because it really depends what criteria you want to use. Um, as far as, like, health goes and, like, how tough they are, that would either be Halo Reach or Halo 4's Hunters um, because of how much crazy health they have. They, have. they have more health than even Halo 1's Hunters, which uh, is pretty high already. But, I mean, if you want to go between Halo Reach and Halo 4, then it'd be Halo Reach because their fuel rod guns are a little better. Uh, but then Halo 3 ODST has the best fuel rod gun of all the fuel rod Hunters. You know, Halo 1, Halo Reach, and Halo 4. So that'd be ODST. But we're not just going by, like, pure health. <clears throat> Because you know they're they're not like a you know, like a <laughs> target practice. They they also you know attack you. So with that in mind, I would have to declare Halo 2's hunters as the best overall. Uh, namely because the beam cannon, assuming it all hits, you know they get every shot in. And you know we're not comparing accuracy here. We're comparing you know, just straight up damage. The damage per second would be 360. So on the correct difficulty. It would be like an instant kill weapon, essentially. Uh, but why not Halo 3 then? Well, Halo 3 hunters, the back plating can be broken off, exposing their back to more damage. Whereas in Halo 2, they have no such vulnerability. So, because uh, Halo 2's hunter armor is pretty much indestructible, <laughs> uh, that is why I would have to give Halo 2's hunters the declaration that they are the best. So yeah, there you go. Halo 2's Hunters are the strongest of all the Hunters in the entire series, in most criterias. Of course, Halo Reach and 4 have more health, but I would say if we could put them in a fight against each other, the Halo 2 Hunters, and maybe even the Halo 3 Hunters would win. So yeah, hopefully you guys did find this comparison to be interesting. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like as always. And, uh, you know, let me know in the comments uh, what you want me to compare next. Or any other thoughts you have or things you want me to check out. Just let me know and I'll do my best to get around to it soon. But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time. Bye guys.